Okay, we're in Microsoft Excel and we want to create a series of dates. Now we're going to base it on these inputs, a start date, a period, which could be days, weekdays, months or years, the number of periods and optionally a list of holiday dates. Now we're going to do this via a custom function and I've called this custom function fill dates. It has four arguments, one of which is non-mandatory holidays you can see the square brackets around that argument name so start date is up there then we have period then number of periods and then holidays close the bracket it returns days or weekdays or months or years obviously i can change the start date and the number of periods and the holiday dates okay let's see how this can be done now, before we create the custom function, I just want to go through the calculations that that custom function needs to perform. First of all, how do we produce a list of days, calendar days? Well, we can use the sequence function. So the number of rows is returned by the number of periods in D2. The number of columns is one, and that's the default, so we can skip over that. And then the start is our start date. So I can just close the bracket there and press enter. And that returns a sequence of days. Now, working days, we can use the work day function to calculate. So our start date again would be here, B2. And then the days returned by the sequence function. So the number of rows we want is 10. We only want one column, so we can skip over that. And the start would be zero because the first day needs to be the start date. So we don't want to add any days to that date. Close the bracket for sequence and for work day. So you can see that that's skipping over the weekend dates. Now months, we can use edate. So if you haven't used edate before, it returns the serial number of the date that is the indicated number of months before or after the start date. Well, our start date is here. And then the months, Again, return by sequence, rows, 10 rows, one column, and the start would be zero because the first date needs to be the current date. Now years, we can also use edate for. So our start date again is up here in B2. And the months, we use sequence for again. Rows, returned by the number of periods. Columns one, start would be zero again, because the first date needs to be the start date, but we need to multiply that by 12, 12 months in a year. Now, if we want to exclude the holidays, we need to be able to filter the days. Now, I'm only gonna do it for days, not work days, months or years, but the same principle will apply to these other periods once we create our custom function. So the best way to explain this is to start with X match. And what we're going to do is look up these days in this list of holidays. Now, if I press enter there, you can see it returns NA if the date isn't a holiday date or it returns a number one and two if the date is a holiday date. We want to exclude the dates that are returning a position, a numeric position. So if we run a test on this, is NA, we will get trues for the NA errors and forces for the numbers. So then I can use filter, and I'm filtering these dates, and include uses this logical test. And if I close the bracket, press enter, you can see it's returning the correct dates. Now it is now too short of 10 dates. So to get around this, what we can do is get sequence to return more dates than necessary. So the rows would be, for example, the value in D2 times, let's say three. So three times the number of dates that we actually need. Now, what we can then do here is use the take function to return the correct number of dates based on the number of periods up here. So we're returning the first 10 rows, essentially. So now I've got the correct number of dates. 
So those calculations are essentially what we need to perform within our custom function. Now we're going to start with the let function, come down on a new line. And the first argument is name one. So we're going to name different parts of our calculation. So first of all, we need to calculate the number of dates that we're going to return. And the name I'm going to give to that calculation is n. And the value for that name uses the sequence function. Number of rows is defined by the number of periods. We don't need any columns. And our start is going to be zero. That's because the first date always wants to be the start date that we specify in B2, comma. Now, the second name I'm going to create is dates. And within dates, we're going to calculate whether we need to return days, weekdays, months, or years. Now I'm going to use the switch function to help us to do this. And the expression that the switch function is going to evaluate is the value selected in the dropdown in C2, comma. And I'll come down on a new line again. Now the first item in that list is days. So that's our value one. And our result one, if this is days, would be the start date plus n. And n, if you remember, is returned by the sequence function, comma, come down on a new line, equals weekdays, comma. So the result for weekdays will be returned by workday. Hopefully you can remember this from earlier on. So our start date is in B2, and days is returned by n, close bracket, comma. Then in the drop down we have months, comma, and if you remember we used e date for months. So our start date again is here, B2, and the number of months is returned by n, close bracket, comma, come down on a new line, years, it's the last item in the drop down. And again, we're using e date to calculate the years. So our start date is in B2, comma, and the months will be n times 12. So the great thing about let is once we've calculated n once up here, we don't need to calculate it again. We can just refer to the initial calculation, which is a lot more efficient. Now, lastly, for switch, we can supply a default value. Now, that would be relevant if nothing has been selected in the dropdown. So if that's the case, we would want to return, please select a period. So we'll then come down a new line and I'll close the bracket for switch, comma. So if I then come down on a new line and I say that I want to return dates as we have calculated here, we can see what let is currently returning. So at the moment I have years here, so it's returning years. But if I went for days, it would return days. Weekdays, it returns weekdays. And months, it returns months. So we've basically combined these three formulas into one formula by using let. What we need to do now is exclude these holiday dates from this list. So I'm going to change the name I've given to dates to unfiltered dates. And then I'm going to create another name called filtered dates. And this is where we're going to return the dates excluding the holidays. Now, if you remember, we used the filter function to do this. So we're filtering unfiltered dates. And we used is in a around x match. X match looks up the unfiltered dates in the holiday dates. And it returns NA for the dates that are not holiday dates, which is why we're using is in a. So I'll close the bracket for filter and then comma, come down on a new line. And then if I return the filtered dates as my results, making sure that I have a bracket at the end there. You can see I now have the dates excluding the holiday dates, but I don't have enough dates. 
So if you remember, we multiplied the number of dates by something like two or three. So I'll say three. That gives us too many dates. So I use the take function around filter to specify the number of dates that I want to return. So that would be the number of dates specified by the number of periods. And I have the correct number of dates. Now the next stage is to convert this to a custom Lambda function. So we're going to put the whole thing in Lambda. And what we can do is create parameters or argument names for each of the inputs that this function will require. So essentially, these are the inputs. So we've got start date, comma, period, comma, number of periods, and then holidays, comma. So what I need to do is paste over these cell addresses with the appropriate parameter name. So for example, start date needs to replace any reference to B2. Period needs to replace any reference to C2. Number of periods needs to replace any reference to D2. And holidays needs to replace any reference to the holiday range which we've used down here. Now I will need another close bracket at the end here. If I press enter, it returns the cow carrier because we don't use Lambda functions directly in the worksheet like we are currently using it here. Instead, what we do is copy this formula, go to the name manager. So that's on the formulas tab, name manager go to new, and then we give this function a name. Now I've already called my original function fill dates. So for argument's sake, we'll call this fill dates two. And the formula we paste into the refers to box and then click on okay, and then on close. So now if I use fill dates two from this list, I can specify a start name, a period, the number of periods, and then my holidays. And it returns the appropriate dates. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make this holiday argument non-mandatory. At the moment, if I don't specify a range, I get the calc error. Or if I don't use that argument at all, I get the value error. So here's the original Lambda function. And the first thing I'm going to do is put square brackets around the holidays argument. And you'll know that that means it's then non-mandatory. But I do need to create a test for that argument to see if it's empty. And there is actually a function specifically designed for this situation. It can only be used within Lambda. And that function is called isEmitted. So we'll create another name within let, and we'll call it no holidays. And the value is returned by is emitted. And we're testing the holidays argument. Comma. So down here, we don't want to return necessarily the filtered dates. We want to return either the unfiltered dates or the filtered dates. So we'll create another name called dates. And the value for that can be an if statement. So if no holidays is true, then we want to return unfiltered dates. Otherwise, we want to return the filtered dates. Close the bracket for if, comma, come down on a new line, and we want to return dates as the final result of our let function. But we need to be careful here because sequence is returning the number of periods times three. And down here, we're using take to only take the number of dates specified by the number of periods. Now what we'll do is remove take here. So we would want to use take on dates. And the number of dates we want to return is defined by number 
of periods. So if I press enter, and then I'll copy this version of the Lambda function into the name manager. So you can see now I no longer have the value error here. In the screen tip, I can see holidays is non-mandatory, but I can include holidays if I need to.